Is that okay? Oh, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Hey, hey guys, welcome to this brief introduction to EEG. So just what is EEG anyways? Well, it stands for electroencephalogram or electroencephalography. It's the continuous recording of electrical brain activity. And just what is this brain activity? What is it that EEG is recording? Your brain is made up of billions, actually hundreds of billions of cells, called neurons. The neurons have axons which release neurotransmitters and dendrites which receive them. When the dendrites of a neuron receives neurotransmitters from the axons of other neurons, it causes an electrical polarity change inside of the neuron. This polarity change is what the EEG equipment is recording. It's the postsynaptic dendritic currents from the cortical pyramidal cells. The activity from one single neuron is way too small to be detected with EEG equipment. But when thousands or tens of thousands of neurons work in concert, we're in business. Now let's look at some of the equipment used to measure EEG signals. First, there's the EEG cap, or net, which has sponges to hold saline solution and metal electrodes to conduct the electrical signals to the EEG amplifier, which of course magnifies the signal strength. The data then gets sent to a data acquisition computer to be stored and analyzed. Each EEG cap has special electrodes to measure the eye muscle movement. This is called EOG, or electrooculogram. This is what the EEG data looks like as it's being recorded on the data acquisition computer. The numbers down the left side correspond to the electrodes on the EEG cap, which the participant is wearing. In the actual data itself, you can see the tiny waves which represent brain activity, while the larger amplitude waves represent muscle movement, such as eye movement recorded on the EOG electrodes. EEG amplitude is typically measured in microvolts, and the wavelengths are divided into five different bands, which are determined based on the frequency oscillations. The five frequency bands are gamma, beta, alpha, theta, and delta. When the EEG signal is time-locked to a stimulus which the participant reacts to, it's called ERP, or event-related potentials. The time period before the presentation of a stimulus in an ERP experiment is called the baseline. EEG is a very effective neuroimaging technique. One of its strengths is that it is fast. EEG can record brain activity on the order of milliseconds. Another strength of EEG is that it is very safe. EEG doesn't actually do anything to the brain, it just passively records the electrical activity which the brain is already giving off. One of the weaknesses of EEG, actually its main weakness, is its poor spatial resolution. This means that EEG is not very good at telling where things are happening in the brain, at least not as good as other techniques, such as fMRI. Now that we've been introduced to the basics of EEG, let's talk about how to collect EEG data. The first phase is to prepare the solution. You want to start out by filling a bucket with one liter of distilled water. Next, you're going to mix in potassium chloride to increase the electrical conductance. You're also going to mix in Johnson's baby shampoo to soften the scalp and decrease electrical impedance. Be sure to mix thoroughly. The second phase of collecting EEG data involves taking various measurements of the participant's head. First, greet your participant. 
explain what the experiment is going to be about, and have them sign a consent form to participate in it. Next, you're going to measure the circumference of the participant's head in order to determine the correct EEG cap size which the participant will be wearing. Once you've selected the correct cap, you're going to soak it in the solution you've already prepared. Set the timer to soak it for 10 minutes. Next, you're going to take some other measurements to find the exact center of the participant's head. First, measure from jawline to jawline. You may need to ask the participant to open and close their mouth so you can feel where the top of the jaw is. Once you've found the exact center, make a mark with a colored pencil. Next, you're going to measure from the nasion, which is the point right in between the participant's eyebrows, to the inion. The inion is a bony projection at the back of the skull. You can feel it with your fingers. Once you've found these two points, hold the tape measure, divide by two to find the center, and make another mark. The two marks you've just made should form an X in the center of the participant's head. This will be important later. For now, we're done with this phase and ready to head next door to start recording. The last phase of preparation for recording EEG involves getting the clearest possible signal from each electrode by lowering the impedances. We start by connecting the cap to the electrical recording equipment. Then we start the software that is going to be used to record the EEG signal. We want to make sure our participant is very comfortable and that they have everything they need, such as a towel or tissues in case some of the failing solution drips onto their face or shoulders. Our third step in this last phase is placing the EEG cap on the participant's head. To do so, you'll want to spread your fingers on either side on the inside of the cap. There's a reference electrode in the center of the cap called CZ or CZ. You'll want to place this directly on the X which you've made previously. This is a very important step. As you bring the cap down around the participant's head, you'll want to bring the straps under the chin and there are two openings in the cap which you can adjust to fit around the participant's ears. Next, you'll adjust the chin straps so that the cap is very snug yet has a comfortable fit. The more tightly the cap fits, the easier it will be for the electricity to be conducted into the electrodes. But comfort is paramount for the participant. There are various techniques we can use to lower the impedances at each electrode. When you first look at your screen, the software may show something like this. The red circles indicate the electrodes for which the impedances are still too high. The main technique is simply to massage or wiggle the electrodes. Wiggling causes the sponges to get closer to the scalp and moves the hair out of the way, which may block the electrical connection. After you're done giving a quick wiggle to each of the electrodes, your screen may look something more like this. The green indicates that we are good to go. If you have a couple of electrodes for which the impedances are still too high, you can give them a little bit more attention. Here's some techniques you can use. First, add some more saline solution. Then wiggle around the electrode some more. If that doesn't work, then try directly moving aside the hair to make sure that the sponge comes into direct contact with the scalp. Let's look at that from another angle. Just add more saline solution, wiggle around the electrode, and move aside the hair if needed. And that should do it. 
Now you're ready to ask the participant to start the experiment. Just press record to start collecting your EEG data.